You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, it's Sarah, and I want to welcome you personally to this very special edition of the No Labels, No Limits podcast. This is a new series that we just started, and we are so excited to introduce you to Moments with Maria. This series is a shorter version of the podcast. Maria touches upon words of advice and wisdom and encouragement that are shared by the members of our community, for the members of our community, and to all of you beyond. So without further ado, let's welcome Maria. Hello and welcome. My name is Maria Lees. I am the content writer for Team Sarah Box. And this is another video in our series in which different members of the Sarah Box community are sitting with me to share some wisdom, encouragement, and advice with our community. Chatting with me today is Amy Colvin. Amy offers courses and guided spiritual tours focused on helping us cultivate peace of mind, vitality, and resilience. Amy, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. It's wonderful to be here. I think this is a fantastic project, and I'm glad to be part of it. Well, we are certainly happy to have you here. Um, Since not everybody in our community knows you, would you mind sharing just a little bit more about yourself and the work that you do? Sure. I'm Amy Colvin, and I live in Washington State, and The thing I'm most passionate about is helping people really deepen their self-compassion and deepen um, how they they are settled with themselves in the world so they can go out and fill the world with positivity, which I know is part of what the focus of this video series is all about. Um, But I've been teaching meditation for over a decade with a specific focus on cultivating self-compassion. I think that's wonderful. I feel like self-compassion is one of those things that we all could use a little bit of a lesson in. Just (laughs) there's always room to grow in that area, I feel like. Well, Amy, I understand that you've got a few tips and strategies to share with us today that can help us all become a little more in touch with our most authentic self. Is that right? Yeah. So I think hmm, when I actually I was talking to somebody the other day and I came up with this analogy around cultivating self-compassion and a, a piece of it came with a recognition of the definition of compassion. This is a definition I really, really like. It's one that I learned when I was learning how to teach the um, cultivating compassion training at Stanford. And the gist of it is that compassion has three components. The first component is awareness. So you need to be aware of the distress or suffering in yourself or others. And then you are emotionally moved by that distress or suffering. And the third component takes requires taking action. So there's so much distress going on in the world and it becomes really, I mean, if we paid attention to all of it, we would just be melting on the floor like a giant puddle. Mm-hmm. So what I invite people to do is to think about times in your life when you have noticed distress or suffering in yourself. So I use the analogy of I'd gotten stung by a wasp I was a massage therapist at Google. I had three days that were completely packed, six clients a day, and I went ahead and went to work anyway. So I was aware that I had been stung by this wasp, but I was not yet emotionally moved by that sting. I wasn't emotionally moved to take care of myself. I was putting my clients' needs ahead of my own. And I ended up working through it. And eventually, on by the time day two showed up of that particular week, I'm like, man, I can't do this anymore. And then my compassionate action was to email my boss and say, I'm sorry, I, I just can't do this. Because my arm, I respond to wasp stings poorly and I swell up huge. So a couple of years later, I ended up getting stung again. And fortunately, as humans, our brains are neuroplastic and they can learn and grow and find new patterns. And I went, oh yeah, the last time I was stung, I went to work and it was awful. So the second time that I got stung, you know, a year or two later, 
I thought about it. I was aware of my problem. And this time I was emotionally moved to take care of myself. And, you know, within 20 minutes, my compassionate action was to, you know, take care of myself in the moment, but also then to immediately email my boss and say, hey, I just got stung again. I can't come to work at all. And it's a really tiny little illustration, but to me, it it shows how we often forget to take care of ourselves. I, I mean, I think every person that's watching this video right now has probably found an instance in their life or can think of an instance in their life where they put other people first to their own detriment. Mm -hmm. And my goal in the training that I offer is to really help people see their patterns, see how, what they can do to take better care of themselves. And I'm, I'm actually putting together a brand new program that I hope to launch in the spring that integrates mindfulness, mindset, movement, and meditation, because all of those things together really combine to create that beautiful foundation of self-compassion. So that, you know, my, I guess my, my tip towards being a more authentic human being is just pay, pay attention, be aware. And when you need to be emotionally moved for yourself, feel it. And then take some sort of action that's supportive of you. I love that. What would you say, Amy, to somebody who's they're they're hearing this message and they're thinking, well, I want to take better care of myself, but is that selfish? You know, oh, that's they, a they struggle, great one. They struggle with that. that yeah. Well, I mean, and, and I hear that all the time in the classes that I teach. So it's think about that that phrase that everybody knows when you get onto the airplane about putting on your own face mask first. It's the same kind of thing. So it's absolutely not selfish to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of others. So, for example, going back to that wasp sting and massage analogy, one of the things in that first, the first time I got stung, what I realized after the end of the first day of work is that I wasn't able to provide the quality massage to my clients on the second and third day that I would like to provide. And the only way I would be able to support others and offer what they wanted from me was if I felt healthy in myself, if I felt good in myself. And I realized that with a completely swollen arm, I didn't. So it's not selfish to take care of yourself. And another huge piece around self-compassion, and we don't have time to dive into it now, but is learning how to set boundaries for yourself, healthy boundaries. It doesn't mean you're being selfish. It doesn't mean that you're being, I don't know, better than others. You have to take care of yourself before you can support others and extend that outward. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those things that it sounds so simple when it's laid out. And then the practical application, it's like, okay, but what does this look like, right? Right. And yeah. And you mentioned a few different, you know, tools that can be used for taking care of yourself, meditation, mindset, movement. Um, but I guess my my next question would be for somebody who is not in a habit of practicing self-compassion and really taking care of themselves. And they're hearing that list of like, these are all good things that you should do. And it feels overwhelming. Like it's so much that they aren't doing currently. What would you suggest as like a good first baby step to kind of get into, you know, a better habit of self-compassion and, and caring for oneself. You know, this is going to say, it might sound incredibly easy and it it is. Um, and you'd, you probably have heard this from lots of other people, but I would say the very first step in cultivating self-compassion is to intentionally slow down and breathe. A few times a day, all it takes is to stop doing what you're doing, get off your devices, get off of your, your phone. You don't, you can even do this in the grocery store line. You can do it in the car, wherever it is, but take a moment to think, I'm going to pay attention to me right now. And I'm going to breathe, breathe deeply and fully and feel what your body feels like. Where are you holding that tension? Can you let it go? 
what emotions are you feeling and where do you feel them in your body? And can you soften that and just breathe into it and begin to let those emotions go? Um, and so that simple, simple, simple act of breathing. There's another one. So one of the things that I teach and I love teaching is about mudras. And mud mudra is a Sanskrit word for hand position. So one of my favorite is to take your right hand, thumb and index finger together and turn the palm in towards your chest and put your hand at your heart level. This mudra represents knowledge of the heart. So if you do this simple mudra, and you drop your gaze or close your eyes and just say, for the next 30 seconds, I'm gonna breathe and pay attention to me and notice how I feel. And, and so there in that process, you're becoming aware. You hopefully are becoming emotionally moved. I really like me or man, I can't stand me at the moment, but I'm still holding space with me. And then, you know, just this act alone, holding this mudra and breathing, that's your compassionate action. Mm, I love that. It's so sweet and simple. I like that you said it was just take 30 seconds at a time, maybe a couple times a day. So it's maybe two minutes out of your entire day. But it's a good first step for it's just getting in touch with yourself. I think that's such a powerful practice. And one more thing about that. And, and the reason why it's powerful is because you're bringing that intention, your, that attention intentionally back to self. It's so easy to go through your entire day outwardly focused, taking care of stuff, taking care of other people, taking care of tasks. Mm -hmm. And so rarely, I mean, our society doesn't teach us to do it. So rarely do we just go, oh, I'm going to take 30 seconds and pay attention to me and be nice to me and do something really healthy for me, like breathing deeply and fully. Yeah, I, I resonate with that deeply. And it's, it's definitely something that I personally need to work on. So I'm very grateful, Amy, for all that you have shared with us today. And I know I'm probably not the only person listening to your message today that is thinking, yeah, that was the reminder <laughs> that I needed today. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for yeah, joining yeah. us today and for all that you've shared. Before we go, if you had to leave our community with just one final message or quick parting words, what would they be? I would say give yourself this affirmation on a regular basis and just say to yourself and say it out loud so your ears can actually hear it. I am enough and I will grow and become even better. That's one we all need to sit with. <laughs> I like that. Well, thank you so much. And as always, thank you to those who've carved out a few minutes from their day to join us and to watch this video. Stay tuned for more encouraging and uplifting videos coming your way. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.